What's going on, Melon Farmers? DMAC back with another fun little video that I decided to do. I got a comment while we were doing the Zero to Hero series if we could get a low bottom 650 overall forward to actually be a legitimate NHL player. The series did incredibly well. It was an absolute success. But one of the fun comments that I got in that series was you should take an entire uh, NHL lineup and replace them with like 50 overall franchise players and see how long it would take to become a legitimate contender. So you know what? That's exactly what we did. I took the entire Arizona Coyotes lineup, completely threw them to free agency, created an entire roster of 50 overall 18-year-old medium franchise potential players I spent two and a half or three hours or something like that, getting all their contracts and everything, trying to get uh, salary cap compliant because I wanted to keep the salary cap on so none of the other teams could do super stacking and stuff like that. And my goodness, did it ever take a while. But we got ourselves an entire custom team full of just fantastically named players that are going to hopefully in just a few short years because an 18-year-old franchise player is probably going to grow up in quick. Uh, and just see how long it would take us to become an actual Stanley Cup contender. So, without further ado, keep salary cap on. Let's start this career. If you haven't already, scroll down, hit that like button, subscribe, and dab dab in this one. Well, I already explained what we're going to do. So, I'll see you guys at the menu. I am going to get the edit line screen and everything all friggered out. We're already at the preseason. I have no idea if we are even salary cap compliant, I might have to go into free agency and sign some like 55 overall guy to like a $15 million contract to get a salary cap compliant. I thought I did a pretty good job of that, but apparently I might not have a whole boatload of folks on this team. After the first year, I got them all signed to eight year contract extensions and those eight year contract extensions generally get bigger. So, cause I, I tried to figure, I tried to, um, Figure that in that while well, the cap jumps by six million after the first year. So we are probably going to have to do that anyway. So we're going to go blue juice. I'm going to offer him a one year, one way. Well, that way about a, about a, what, a, what is it? A million and a quarter gets eaten up by sending him down to the AHL, but the rest of his cap hit will remain. So we're going to sign him to like a, I don't know what, seven and a half. Well, 7.6. Sure. I know he'll sign that. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to go and I am going to uh, edit some lines. I'll see you guys in a moment. All righty. So here we go. Are you guys ready to see the 20 players that I, that I created? All 50 overall franchise players. I created every single one of them this morning. Oh, yeah. This is called the 50s, by the way. <laughs> the 50s. First. Number one left winger, Sergei Sniperov. <laughs> Number 25. He's pretty terrible, but he has good discipline. So these are his X factors. One T, it's tricky, make it snappy, and seeing eye. He is signed to a one-year $4.5 million contract. Next, you know him, you love him, but now he's a center. Mr. Joey Terrible, the playmaking center. He is also pretty awful, has decent discipline, somewhat decent poise. We are going to be turning off the injuries on this regardless. So uh, I didn't do anything with their durability. He has send it with... Uh, ankle breaker, elite edges, and magnetic. He is signed also to a one-year $4.5 million contract. And the top line right wing, Otto Stompy, the big power forward right winger who has very, very terrible speed, but actually halfway decent physical. He's also got a little bit of poise. He has big tipper, back at you, big rig, close quarters, Shrug it off and total eclipse for X Factors. And he's signed to a one-year, $5 million contract. There is your top line. We also have Piper Placebo, the 50 overall franchise left wing playmaker who is all wheels and puck control and absolutely nothing else. He has ankle breaker, quick pick, and send it. And he's signed to a one-year, $3.5 million contract. Number two center, 6'4", 220-pound Cava Tappy who is a power forward center. He is all physical, all aggression, and somewhat 
shot, but not really anything special. He's got a little bit of poise. He's got born leader. I love that one. Back at you. Big rig and bouncer. His cap hit is also $3.5 million. On the right wing, we got Diesel McNeasel. Six foot, 197 pound sniper. He's got a little bit of wheels compared to some of the other guys. All discipline, all shooting, little bit of puck control. He has snipe, all alone, beauty, backhand, and shock and awe as his X factors. And he has a $3.9 million cap hit. On the third line, we got Rody Lacey, six foot three, two hundred and thirteen pound, two way forward, who's all defense and a little bit of shooting. He has Big Rig, Born Leader, Crease Crasher, and Quick Pick as his X factors, and he has a two point five million dollar cap hit this year. Then we got Shancy Larue as our third line center, six foot one, two hundred and two pound, two way forward as well. And this guy is just kind of all defense. He's a little bit of everything, very, very mixed, very balanced attributes. He's got in reverse and no contest as his X factors. Oh, yeah, and that's right. With some of the guys that I was making, uh, I decided to give some of them like five X factors. Some of them got two. Some of them got three. Some of them just got one. And he has a $2 million cap hit. After that, we got Terry Mulch. The 18-year-old little 5'9", 171-pound playmaker who is all puck control, all speed, nothing else. He has shrug it off because he's so little, and it's tricky. He has a $2.8 million contract. After that, we got one of my favorites, 6'9", 263-pound Bam Bam Baruby, baby. Gigantic power forward who has... Almost zero puck control, even less discipline, not the not the worst shooter on the team, but definitely not the best. Not too bad defense, horrid skating, and unreal physical play. He's an absolute monster. He's got total eclipse, back at you, and truculence. And he has a $950,000 cap hit. After that, we go over to Denny Lewis, 6'5", 235 pound, everybody's favorite enforcer. Another one who's pretty much got nothing going for him except for his physical play. And he's got truculence back at you and unstoppable force. He has a $900,000 cap hit. And then Walker, everyone's favorite ranger, the grinder, two, uh, six foot two, 208 pounds. He is very aggressive, very good defensively, very bad offensively. That's all he's got going for him. He also has back at you and bouncer and a $900,000 cap hit. This is where it gets fun. I know this intro is taking a long time, but I, you guys are going to get to know the team and it's going to just make more sense because I have it all written down where the lineups and everything are going to go. So that none of these are going to change ever. You know what I mean? So... Here we go. On defense, we got R2 Niku, <laughs> the uh, left lefty offensive defenseman. He is not so great defensively, a little better offensively, decent enough puck control, and he's a relatively fast little guy there. He's got heat seeker, ankle breaker, off the rush, seeing eye, stick him up, and thunderclap for his X factors. And he has a $6.25 million cap hit for the one year. And after this year, when his extension kicks in, it's a doozy. Beside him, is Brock McFadden, the 6'3", 208-pound right-handed defensive defenseman. Terrible offensively, really not that bad defensively. He's got in reverse, ice pack, and stick him up. He has a $4.3 million cap hit. On the second defensive pairing, we got Joachim Jordan. Yes, I did come up with all of these names on the spot by myself. That's why they're all terrible. Here we go. <laughs> this guy is another one who's just a little bit, he's, he's very balanced, very, very mixed. There's nothing like nothing special in any area, nothing too much worse than anything else in any area. Very balanced. He has off the rush, heat seeker, and seeing eye. He has a $3 million cap hit. Beside him, we got Thatcher Hosta, the five foot ten, 179 pound, smaller right handed two way defender who has a little bit more speed and is slightly better defensively and offensively, but his physical play is where he lacks the most. He's got wheels, uh, magnetic, and shut down. As his X-Factors, his cap hit comes in at a whopping two and three quarter million dollars for the one year. Oh, and this is one of the best. Alexander Hamelinen, the six foot four, 211 pound defensive defenseman on the third pairing, who's all defense, no offense, 
and is somewhat not awful physically. He's got back at you, shrug it off and thunderclap X-Factors and has a $1 million cap hit this year. And beside him is anti Suoma Linen, the enforcer on the third pairing. He is not terrible defensively. He's pretty much brutal in every other category except for physical. And he's just got back at you. He has an $825,000 cap hit this year. And now you get to meet the goaltenders. We got J-Lo, the six foot two, <laughs> 195 pound, uh, 18 year old franchise goalie. He is a hybrid goaltender. His vision and his aggressiveness are his two best things other than his actually pretty stellar poise. So in big games, he's going to show up a little bit better. He's got dialed in contortionist light work, no timer post to post and sponge as his X factors and has a cap hit of $3 million. And his backup is Casper Plath, the six foot one, 205 pound, 18 year old butterfly goaltender who just has 60, 66s across the board. He's got tip jar and all or nothing as his X factors and has a $900,000 cap hit. So now that you've met the team, Oh, let's start simulating. What we're going to do first is advance one day. Yeah, the minimum salary cap is $60 million, and we're at like 59 or something like that. So I was close. I was close. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, we're just going to hope to God that AHL guy signs for like the $7 million. We'll send him down to the AHL, where he will definitely get us up way above the minimum. I feel like this episode is going to be a really long one. <laughs> but I am going to jump in against the Dallas Stars for like two seconds, just so I can get the, the thumbnail for this whole series. So give me a minute and I'll be back at the menu and we can continue on. All right, so we ended up losing that game for nothing. I just jumped in for like a second to get the thumbnail. I want to show you guys one thing that's actually incredibly funny. Check this out. When I hit play game, look at how good our team... Oh, hold on. Why do I have the stupid two controller thing? Look at how terrible our team is. Offense, 14. Defense, 15. Goaltending, 37. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. All right, that's all I wanted to show you. Now we can start simulating. Okay. We still... Hey, we got two goals in that game. Hey, there you go. They want to give us Phil Deneau. They feel bad. <laughs> We've scored four goals all year. Oh, my God. We can't get anything in. There's one. We got one in that one. No, 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 no. No trades. Eight to two loss. That's better. One nothing loss. Hey, goaltending showed up in that one. Eight nothing loss. Fifteen nothing. Thirteen nothing. Six nothing. Oh my god, we haven't won a game. We've got like six goals all year. <laughs> Make that like seven. Oh wow. Eight, nine. Jeez, this is unbelievable. Oh man, this might take a couple of years. <laughs> so <laughs> all the way to January first, we went. Oh, and 34, and Otto Stompy leads the parade with five points in 34 games. Has anyone grown? Wow, everybody's grown by like a couple. Sergei Sniperov, 52, 52, 52. The whole second line went to 51. The whole third line went to 52. The whole fourth line went to 52. What about the defense? He went for, uh, he went to 51. He went to 52, 51, 51, 52, 51. What about the goaltending? They're probably at like 43. Oh, J-Lo is up to 54, baby. <laughs> and that's good. He's the guy I wanted him to be our starter. And Casper Plath has already grown by a couple as well. Well, this is certainly going a lot better than uh, the Joey Terrible series went. Man. All right, let's get to the end of this season. Would it not be incredible if we went 0-82 and 82 and every member of our team grew by like six or more? <laughs> All right. I think, you know what, this time, because we're running a little long here, this time I think we're just going to quick sim all the way to the end of the season. I think that's where it ends, right? Yeah, right after the Nashville game. Oh, let's see. Are we going to make the playoffs? That's what I want to know. Ha! Take that. What was it? San the San Jose Sharks? Who were <laughs> the worst team in history or whatever it was? R2 Niku, the defenseman, ended up with 15 points. Okay, so... We are going to go into this, and we're going to see how everyone... Dude, Artunika was a minus 200. <laughs> ha 
That is unbelievable. Okay, here we go. So R2 Niku led the team with 15 assists this year, didn't get a single goal, and he jumped up to 55 from 50. So not too bad, man. All, it's all them X factors, I'm telling you. The next guy was Piper Placebo, who had four goals, nine assists, 13 points, and he was only a minus 140. And he jumped up to 53. Who is he? He was the second line left winger. Okay, whoops, didn't mean to do that. After him, we got Thatcher Hosta, the right defenseman. He was a second pairing defenseman who had two goals, 10 assists, 12 points, minus 172, jumped up to 53. Sergei Sniperov, minus 168. He jumped up a little bit. I got to tell you, his shot actually did get quite a bit better. He had 10 goals. He was the only guy I'd probably to hit double digit. Well, he could, could only be the only guy to hit double-digit goals. Another one, minus 169, was Otto Stompy, baby. The top-line right-winger. One goal, nine assists, 10 points. He got a little bit better. 54 overall. Terry Mulch had nine points. Diesel McNeasel had two goals, six assists, eight points, minus 141. And he only grew to 52. After that, Joey Terrible, the number one center, only had seven points. After that, Walker, everybody's favorite Ranger, the six foot two, bottom six four. He was a fourth line forward, was only a minus seventy, and he had four goals, two assists, six points. My goodness, Cavatappi, the number two center, only had six points. He only grew to fifty three. Bam Bam Barube had hundred and thirty six penalty minutes, and he was a minus eighty one. Shancy Larue, third line center, minus one hundred and six, had five points. Joachim Jordan. One of the uh, middle pairing defenders, he had three goals, two assists, minus 163. Uh, Denny Lewis, the fourth line center. And you want to know why he grew best? Because he was closest to where he belonged, at the bottom of the lineup. And after that, Brock McFadden, the top pairing defensive defenseman, had just four points, was a minus 179 but he actually grew by five. Not bad. Alexander Hamalainen, the left-wing defensive defenseman, grew by four. He was minus 106, had four points. Rody Lacey, the left-winger, had one assist in 82 games, playing 12 and a half minutes. After that, Antti Suomalainen, the right third-pairing D-man with a minus 106, also had 111 penalty minutes, just had the one assist. Nobody went without a point on this team. How did the goalies do? J-Lo had a save percentage of an 877. We faced a lot of shots. <laughs> he only allowed an average of 6.44 goals against per game, and he jumped to 50 flipping eight, baby. After that, we look at Casper Plath, the backup, who probably only started 20 or so games, but got himself into 42 because every goalie on earth gets pulled after playing that terrible. Jesus, he had an 862 and he grew to 54 overall. All right, so let's fast track this offseason. That is a historically terrible season. So let's fast track the offseason. I think we're going to be fast tracking pretty much all the offseasons. You know the team now. Everybody is going to be in the exact same spot every single season. Oh, man. Let's get through this uh, offseason real quick after we figure out who won the Stanley Cup. And I wonder if we won the draft lottery. <laughs> I really wonder if we did. That Wouldn't it be hilarious if we didn't win the draft lottery? That would be kind of incredible, actually. All right. So let's see who's going to take home the Stanley Cup this first year. It is the Boston Bruins. And the San Diego Gulls get the Calder Cup. All righty. So the ma uh, maximum salary cap goes to $87 million, and we got a lot of guys on this team. We did not win the draft lottery. We got third. <laughs> the worst part is we're going to draft the guy at third, and he is never going to play a game in the NHL. All right. So the boys are back. Here we go. It says they got minus fives, but last year it didn't, so I'm going to back out and go back in again. Uh, for the Tucson Roadrunners, we'll go best lines. Okay. Now we'll go edit lines again. Make sure we got this right. Yeah, see, they don't have minuses. This game's broken. <laughs> Surprisingly, though, look at this. J-Lo jumped to 65 overall. Almost worth that eight-year, $5 million contract. Almost, eh? Casper Plath only had a solid 1.45. 
R2 Niku jumped to 59, McFadden to 59, Thatcher Hosta went to 57, Joachim Jordan went to 59, Alexander Hamalainen went to 59, and Anti Suomalainen went to 58. On offense, Sniperov went to 58, Joey Terrible grew better than he has in ever, Otto Stompy. Went to 59 overall. Diesel McNeasel went to 55. Cavatappi went to 56. Piper Placebo went to 57. Rody Lacey to 57. Shancy LaRue jumped up to a 59. Terry Mulch to 58. Bam Bam Baruby went to 59. Denny Lewis went to 59. And Mr. Walker Ranger went to 58. So there was some pretty darn significant growth on this team. I'm very curious to see now. Now that I go in, we got to pick our captains. So obviously, uh, we want Joey Terrible to be the captain. I think what we're going to do is probably have Bam Bam Baruby as an alternate, and we're probably going to have Brian McF... Nope, because he has the greatest name of all time, Anti Suomalainen, is going to be our other alternate captain. So, we're done. Now I'm very curious to go here and jump in, and I want to see what our offense and defense is now. So hold on. If I go to play game, we freeze. <laughs> Oh my goodness. What are we now? 29, 33, and 58. Last year we were like 14, 15, and 34. So we have actually jumped quite a bit. And the closer they get to being like a legitimate NHL team, the better their overalls will get. So this time we're not effing around here, man. We're just going straight to January. And let's see if we can actually get a regulation win. Guys! Guys! We did it! In December, we beat the Ducks 2-1. to one. We were 1-32-3. <laughs> I noticed in this, we were actually... there. Like, this is a bad example if you're looking at what's on the screen right now. But there was quite the little period of time where we were actually keeping a lot of games pretty close. <laughs> so let's see who's leading the parade. Joey Terrible with 14 flipping points. That's my guy right there. The number one center, who's 61 overall. He's only he's only a minus 52. He's a lot better than he was last time. So he jumped to 61 overall now. Let's take a look at his attributes. He has like 79 a lot of things. My goodness. 4.5 million for eight years, man. Getting six goals, eight assists, 36 games, man. That's better than Curtis Lazard ever did. <laughs> that was mean. All right. R2 Niku, he's also 61 overall. My goodness, this team's coming up, man. 60 overall, Sergei Sniperov, who by the end of last year had 10 points, all goals. This year, not even halfway through the year, and he's got 10 points. And him too, look at his shot. His shot's getting better. I noticed his puck skills are actually kind of growing a little bit faster, which I'm not overly thrilled about. Terry Mulch has eight points. He's also up to a 60 overall. The speed. Ooh, the puck control. Look at this boy go. Piper Placebo, second line left winger. He's still 59, but that puck control did get quite a bit better. Joachim Jordan on that second defensive pairing is 61 overall. Walker, everybody's favorite ranger, only a minus 22, and he's 61 overall. My God, man. Otto Stompy, 60 overall. He's a number one uh, right winger. I think he actually led our team in points last year. Bam, bam, Barube, baby. I think he might be the best guy in the team right now. The right wing power forward. Look at his physical. Look at his physical attributes. Look at how unbelievable his physical attributes are. <laughs> That's insane. Okay, Cavatappi still stuck at a 58, though. That's not what you want to see. Rody Lacey as well. He's only got three goals. Diesel McNeasel, 57. Man, it's, it's that. Is it the second line or the third line? Well, Cavatappi's on the second line. They're really not playing much. Thatcher Hosta, the other second-pairing defenseman, jumped up to a 58. Alexander Hamalainen is 60 at the on the third pairing. Brian McFadden, 61. He's our defensive defenseman up on that number one pairing. Play 30 minutes a game. <laughs> That's absurd. Shancy LaRue, third-line center. He's up to a 59. Not too shabby. Denny Flippin' Lewis, baby. Number two center. He has our number, no, wait, no, number four center. Sorry. He is our number four center up to a 61. 
And Anti Suoma Linen with just the one assist has jumped up to 60 overall. I just realized I have probably been like going to their attributes and then backing out of them really, really quickly. And I, I apologize for that. He's another one though. Look at this. Anti Suoma Linen has 99 fighting skill. And like his physical is pretty unbelievable. So there you go, man. So that was all skaters. Let's go to goalies. Let's see how they're doing. Look at this guy, J Lo. He got the win. One win, 20 losses in 25 games. Has an 880 save percentage, and he's 66 overall. But look at this guy. Plath has above a 900. <laughs> oh, my God. He's 65 overall. What What was J-Lo? 66. Okay, so he is, still, he is still like the dominant overall goaltender. Wow, okay. So we got one win. In our first 36 games. Let's simulate to the end of the season and see if we can grab another one or two. Who knows? All right. Well, at the end of the season, we weren't able to get another regulation win, but we were able to get two more overtime or shootout losses, bringing our final total to 176 and 5. This is going to take a while. I just want you to know that. But Joey Terrible actually had himself a halfway decent season. Wow. There you go. I think a lot of teams in the NHL got a lot more points than they probably should have because of this Arizona Coyotes team. <laughs> Joey Terrible is 63 overall. It'll be really fun to see how he grows in the offseason and see, because you have to know every single year we're going to, like the first year we basically went 0 and 82. This year we went like 170 six and five or whatever. So it's like our, our record improved a little bit next year. These guys could all jump by a ton. The goaltending is probably going to go up exponentially fast. And who knows? Like we, we could get five, 10 wins in the next, in the next season. And then in episode two, which will be coming out in a couple of days, who knows, man, we could, we could push for a playoff spot in year five. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Joey terrible. Look at this guy. That's almost as good as he got in nine years of his own series. <laughs> oh, man. Sergei Sniperov jumped up to a 61. Artuniku jumped up to a 62. Piper Placebo jumped up to 61. Otto Stompy jumped up to 61. Terry Mulch jumped up to 61. Diesel McNeasel still stuck at 59. Cavatappi up to 59. Bam Bam Baruby 64. Wow. Okay. It's those fourth liners that are jumping up, right? Brock McFadden, number one defender, had nine points, jumped up quite a bit as well. Joachim Jordan, Walker Ranger, 63. Rody Lacey, still at 59, but in the offseason, I expect them to jump up like crazy. Uh, Alexander Hamelinen had five points, and he jumped up to 60. Thatcher Hosta, still 58. Oof. Denny Lewis, 61. Not bad. Uh, anti Suoma Linen 61, and he had three assists, and he was our worst guy. So, J Lo, baby, 57 games played again. He got the one win. He had an 883 save percentage, a 5.56 goals against average. So, he did improve quite a bit from last season, jumped up to a 67 overall. And Mr. Casper Plath still, by the end of the year, had above a 900 save percentage. Is Casper Plath going to be like the guy? Is he going to like steal the number one spot from J-Lo? Who steals the spotlight from J-Lo? Oh my goodness. All right, all right, all right. So you know what? We're going to skip ahead to next season, the third season and the final season of this episode. And we're going to see what everybody has grown to. After I simulate on ahead to basically the retirement page and see who won the Stanley cup. And then again, we're going to uh, fast track our way. Oh, wow. The AHL team made it to the playoffs, probably because there's a bunch of guys on there that are all like rookies that should be in the NHL right now, but let's see who won the Stanley cup first. No, I don't want to look at the scout rankings because I'm not paying attention to any of them anyway. Uh, by the way, that guy we got with the number three picks, the Toronto Maple Leafs win the Stanley cup. And the Calder Cup champions are the Grand Rapids Griffins. By the way, that third overall pick that we had was like an 80 overall playmaker <laughs> that will never play in the NHL. It's so terrible, but I'm terrible. Here we go. Joey Terrible. Number one guy. He's our captain. Salary cap jumps to 90.5. So yeah, we are going to have to sign some like arguably terrible AHLers 
And we still, we didn't get the number one pick. We got the number two pick. Oh my God, Ottawa bumped us out. Damn, that's grody, dude. That's pretty nasty. We just can't win. But it's going to be another guy. Watch, he'll be like 82 overall or something. <laughs> and he's never going to play a game. So, all right, here we go back for the third and final uh, part of this one. Hold on. Baru Bam Bam Baruby is not the captain. Everybody knows that Joey Terrible is the captain. Who did I make the assistants? It was, um, oh, who was it? Bam Bam. That's right. Bam Bam Baruby. And I'm pretty sure it was like anti Suomalainen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Because the guys are still so bad. You know what I mean? It's like it, they, they really don't want me to <laughs> keep those guys in the NHL. Okay, so so far now, after two years, everybody on this team has gone from 50 overall to Sergei Sniperov went to 68. Joey Terrible went to 69. Otto Stompy went to 66. Diesel McNeasel went to 66. Cavatappi to 65. Piper Placebo went to 67. Rody Lacey to 64. Shancy LaRue to 65. Terry Mulch to 68. Bam Bam Baruby to 69. Denny Lewis up to 65. And Walker Ranger to 68 on defense. Uh, R2, I almost called him Sammy Niku. R2 Niku jumped to 69 as well as Brock McFadden. Thatcher Hosta went to 62. Eek! And jo uh, Joachim Jordan went to 69 as well. It seems to be a popular number on this team. 69, baby. Alexander Hamalainen went to 65. And Anti Suomalainen jumped all the way up to 68. Looking great on that third pairing. Now, I got a bit of a dilemma here, baby. J-Lo jumped all the way up. And look at this. He has 83 poise. J-Lo jumped up to 73. Looking fine. But Casper Plath jumped up to 75. <laughs> this is the kind of goalie that could win you some games. But seven years, $1.45 million. J-Lo, seven years at five. J-Lo is the future, the present, and the past. He's everything. I mean, we got to stick with him, right? You just have to. So we fixed up all the lines. Everything's looking real good. Even the special teams lines. Everybody's growing real good. We're just going to keep everything exactly the way it was last year. Now let's say done. Let's go ahead and let's get all the way to January 1st here in year three. Hopefully we do better this time. My goodness. Okay, people, we're making some progress here. We went 329 and four so far here in year three. We have nine years to get this all <laughs> figured out. But we have 10 points in 36 games. That is by like far and away by a damn mile the best we have done. We are scoring a lot more points. Look at Sergei Sniperov's having like a good year. Wow. And what is he at, man? 69. I think he was at like 67 or something. And Joey Terrible not far behind him. Look at this. Only a minus 32. I think our goaltending is getting a little better. Look at this guy. 10 goals, 11 assists, 6 penalty minutes. He's 69 overall. He actually has wheels, dude. He's a sniper, though. His, his puck skills are too good. His shot's not good enough. His puck skills are too good. Joey Terrible's up in the 70s. Oh, baby. And look at his puck skills. <laughs> Redonkulous. Auto Stompy still at 67. It's okay. It's a work in progress. All right. Thatcher Hosta, right, a second pairing right defenseman, still stuck at 62. He's doing all right. Piper Placebo up to 67 with nine points. R2 Niku, our number one defender who makes $10 million a year, only has nine points. Jeez, I'm crow. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. Baruby up to 69. I think everyone in this team could be in the 70s next year. We could win some serious games. Diesel McNeasel, I believe he is the third. No, he is the second line right winger. Only has five points. Walker Ranger, five points as well. Cava Tappy. Uh, that, what is he? Second line center. Still only at 65 overall though, man. Joachim Jordan, that middle pairing, he's up to 70. We could have, a, we could actually have some like legit defense next year. Terry Mulch, five assists. Shancy LaRue, third line center. He's up to 65. He has four points in 36 games. And Brock McFadden, the number one defensive defenseman, still at 69, but he has four assists this year. Alexander Hamalainen, just the three goals. He's at 65 overall. And Anti Suomalainen has one goal, two assists on the other side. He was the enforcer. So at the end of this episode, I do want to go through everyone's 
attributes and see how well they grew. You know what I mean? This is going to be a long freaking video. The next episodes, I promise you, they're not going to be as long. Denny Lewis down in that fourth line, finally having himself a bad year. One goal in 36 games played, but Rody Lacey's right there along with him. You know what I mean? Let's see how these goaltenders are shaping up. Plath has played almost all the games, again, above 900. He has a 902 save percentage. He has every win, all three of them. He has every OT loss where we got a point. He has a shutout in the National Hockey League, and he is 76 overall, baby. This guy could be a legitimate NHL goalie next year. I mean, J-Lo, you got you to gotta catch up, buddy. What are we doing here? He's 74 overall. You only got into eight games. It could be, you want to know why? It's, it's because Casper Plath is not being pulled. That's why he's not getting pulled. My goodness, dude, this is wild. All right, all right, all right. I like it. Let's finish this season off. Let's see if we can go for, you know what? Let's see if we can go for like eight wins. Let's see if we can go for like eight wins. Next year, let's go for 20 wins in the next episode, man. Whoops. And then after that, let's go for a wild card spot. And let's go for a cup. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, let's get to the end of the season, see how we do. All right, so at the end of the third season, we have managed to get this team up to 669 and 7. We got ourselves 19 points this season. There was a couple of losses where we had like six goals in a loss. <laughs> Sergei Sniperov with a 37 point season. He is pushing being a 20 goal scorer. My goodness, he is 70 overall. Let's start taking a look at everybody's career stats as well, right? We got Sergei Sniperov, 70 overall. He went from 50 to 70 in his first three seasons. Just imagine what these guys are going to do next year while they get closer and closer to being legitimate NHLers. Look at this guy. He's got wheels. He's got puck skills. He can shoot. He has a little bit of poise, but his discipline's unbelievable. His offensive awareness is fantabliocious, and he had 19 goals this year. In his career, 246 games played, he has 71 points. 42 of them are goals, and he's only a minus 363. If he keeps this up with the minuses, he could catch Rasmus Ristolainen. All right, so... His uh, attributes are starting to pick it up a little bit. Joey Terrible had himself a 34-point season. He is 70 overall as well. Uh, look at the puck skills. That is where he is most impressive. Joey Terrible got to 70 overall in just three years. He has 70 career points. 51 of them are assists. And I think in the next episode, we're going to have a crap load of legitimate NHLers. Otto Stompy, 24 points for him. He is also on the top line in his career now. He's just 47 points, but this year with a 24-point season, 14 of them being goals, he's looking a lot better. No wheels. His defense is not too bad. His puck skills are not that great, but physically, he's pretty good. Bam, bam. This guy, 152 penalty minutes, and he had 20 points. He's 70 overall. Bam Bam Barubi's got 36 career points in his first three seasons. He's only a minus 164. No wheels. Amazing awareness. Unbelievable physical play. And pretty decent poise, actually, if we're being honest. Here we go. Thatcher Hosta, that second pairing defenseman, was able to get 19 points this year after 12 in his rookie season and just five in his sophomore year. Up to a career high, 19 points on that second pairing right side. He has 36 career points. He's up to 63 overall. He's got decent enough speed considering. I mean, his defensive awareness ain't bad. He can hold on to the puck if he's got to. We got Terry Mulch here with 19 points as well. He is a third line right winger. He had 19 points this season after having 12 last year and nine the year before. He has 40 points in his career. He's up to 69 overall. He has speed, and he has amazing puck skills. Okay, so this guy can move. He's got poise. He's got discipline. He's kind of got offensive awareness, and it's going to be interesting to see over... Whoops, I forgot his career stats. Or did I? No, he has 40 points. We already saw that. And uh, through the offseason, I'm not going to be able to see what they're going to grow into until the beginning of next season. So here we go. Piper Placebo, 18 points for him. He's 68 overall. The second line left winger 
Had 14 points last year, 13 points the year before. Not too bad to get up to 18. He's getting a little bit better every single season, up to 45 points. He is a playmaker with a little bit of wheels, a lot of puck skills, a lot of offensive awareness, to be 100% honest. Artu Niku, the guy. I think he might be the highest overall player on our team at 71. And in his career, he has had 15 points, 24 points, and 18 points. His career... He has six goals, 51 assists, 57 points, a cool minus 444, but he's up to 71 overall, and he's got some wicked awareness, decent puck skills, and that speed is kind of coming along, and he has 90 poise. Are you joking? <laughs> okay, second line center, Cavatappi, still struggling at 65 overall, man. Jeez, he's getting the puck skills, but he's got no wheels. He's got no poise. Not like the other guy. I mean, this guy's kind of a failure, man. He's got 20 goals in his career in three years. He only has 31 points. He's a second-line center. Diesel McNeasel with 15 points. He is a second-line right-winger, 15 points, up to 67 overall, 34 points in his career. But he has had a little trouble getting ice time, apparently. Shancy LaRue, 13 points for the third-line center in his career. He has had five points and six points. So 13, that's like a breakthrough. <laughs> All right. Again, puck skills, not bad. Uh, defensive awareness is getting there. It's getting up there a little bit. Uh, physically, he's that's one of his best things. His physical walker, Ranger, 86 defensive awareness for the grinder who is all physical. He had 10 points in his career. He's had six and seven and now 10. Again, he's kind of breaking through, baby. We're getting there. Joachim Jordan with 10 points on the second left pa second pairing left side has 10 points this year after five and then seven. He has 22 points in his career, but he is 70 overall. And it's all defensive awareness and puck skills and apparently a little physical too. So that's not bad. Rody Lacey, I believe he's third line. Yes, third line left winger. Nine points this season after one and six. So he's one of the weak links. He's only 65 overall. He is... He is one of the weaker links on this team. And Tisawamalainen, eight points on the third pairing for the Enforcer, who is all physical and all defense. He had eight points in 130 penalty minutes. Not too bad, buddy, after one point and then three points again. That's kind of a breakthrough. Kind of unbelievable. All right, Brock McFadden had one goal, seven assists, eight points. He is our number one defensive defenseman, obviously. In his career, he's had four points, nine points, then eight points. But he is a defensive defenseman, so points, not exactly what we're expecting out of him. Alexander Hamalainen, he is the left side third pairing defenseman. In his career, he's had four points, five points, and four points for a total of 13. He's kind of awful, but he has decent defensive awareness and decent physical attributes. After that, the final guy was Danny Lewis. The fourth line center, the enforcer himself, with three points. He's had five in his rookie year, sophomore slump of three, and his third year was the same. He has 11 points in 246 games. He is 66 overall, physically unbelievable, defensively not terrible, but that's just not good enough. All right, in net, we got Plath. He played 70 games. He got five wins, 58 losses, and five OT losses with two shutouts. He also had a 907 save percentage and a 4.00 goals against average, all career bests, and he's a 77 overall, baby. <laughs> My goodness. And look at how his attributes have grown. The speed's not great, the vision's not great, like the athletic part of it, but his reflexes are actually kind of unbelievable. His poise is terrible, but J-Lo... To his credit, got into 19 games. He didn't start them all, but he had one win, 11 losses, two OT losses, and he was approaching a 900 save percentage with an 898. He is still stuck at 74 overall. He started the season at 73 by January 1st. He was at 74. Him, reflexes, not good. Athletic, very good. Puck control, very good. So these are two very different goaltenders, but Casper Plath seems to be kind of stealing the show. So, by the time we start the next episode, we are going to see what they've grown into at the beginning of year four. We have the coaching completely taken care of for the next six years, which will cover the next two episodes. We need to try and be a contender 
I'm hoping by the end of episode two. And then at the end of episode three, I'm hoping we're like a multiple time Stanley Cup champion team. This is going to be a very long video. The next one's probably going to be like half the length. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. There's new videos coming all the freaking time. And until next time, you beautiful melon farmers, have a good one.